Generationsschere. Well, it's no secret that we have an issue with demographics in Germany. We are getting older as a nation and will be forced to solve completely new problems in our companies with regard to management and cooperation. The reason is that the age spread between the generations is going to be significantly larger than it currently is. What is particularly exciting for Siemens in that context is that the demographic challenges differ from region to region. We are not a German company, we are a global concern. Our demographic challenges in India are different than those in China, the USA, or in Germany. It is fascinating. Overall, as a company, we actually have no demographic problem at all. Age distribution at Siemens is superb at the moment. But looking at the individual countries, you definitely find differences. As a result, there is no one-size-fits-all solution here. Every measure applies to India, China and Germany. But when you talk about globally situated companies, the problem is more difficult to solve with a standardised remedy. In that case, you have to approach each issue individually. There is a basic rule to those two things. The more up-to-date and relevant the knowledge is to me personally, the more compromises I can make in terms of its presentation. And that applies almost everywhere in the world, in different areas and across generational or cultural divides. Of course, younger colleagues in the so-called Generation Y are more open to new technologies and feel comfortable with them generally, while many of the older colleagues still have some trouble getting their heads around new things, even if it is about how much know-how one should reveal over social learning or social media platforms. There are still different behavioural patterns. Justified ones, certainly, that can be better dealt with gradually. I see learning platforms as catalysts for change here. That is at least how we do it with our courses. We actively promote such platforms, providing co-workers with instruction and motivating them to share their knowledge with others, because it benefits everyone. Intercultural differences really come out here. For example, in Asia, multimedia learning is much more actively promoted than it is here. In the States, it is similar. We focus heavily on e-learning there because employees are spread out all over the country. What is interesting, however, is that with really good training, employees quickly find there is nothing better than bringing people together physically, especially when the focus is on actual behavioural changes and not just on theoretical knowledge transfer. That will not change in the future either, because when you look at it more closely, the younger generation also benefits greatly from the personal interaction. What can also happen on the social level is we have a range of strata that each deal with media in different ways. Over the long term, that will likely prove to be an even bigger challenge for society than the integrational issues. The fact that the younger folks have the energy and strength to fight that tendency and to try it all over again anyway is a good thing. That is what creates positive tension, inspires innovation and makes a good company culture. If that type of friction takes place in a constructive atmosphere, it is ideal. Concerns like, oh God, here come the generation Ys. Are they going to feel comfortable here or geez? The older folks are traumatized when they have to sit through an e-learning session are counterproductive. We need to be bolder and more resolute here. We need to trust people a lot more to deal with situations. We have to tell them, hey, people, here is a challenge. Come help us to take it on. Of course, learning plays a big role when trying to instill that sort of self-confidence and self-assurance. And it doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman, young or old, in Germany or elsewhere. It is always the same challenge, positioning Siemens on the market and improving ourselves. We want to manufacture great products for our customers. What could be better than a bit of agitation if it produces something good, something new? Wir wollen uns besser werden, wir wollen tolle Produkte für unsere Kunden machen. Ja, was kann es da besseres geben, als auch ein bisschen sich zu reiben? Es ist 
für uns gar nicht so ein großes Dilemma. That is not a problem for us at all, because we focus more on behavior than on knowledge. And behavior is something that has no date of expiry. What I mean is we don't just put employees in courses and pass on ready-made case studies. Participants work on topics that are relevant to their current work. We don't bring knowledge to the courses as such. We give motivational speeches and invite experts. But the real point is to allow people to develop themselves within their own topic area. That topic area is always the most current one they are facing. If we work with generic building blocks, it is typically through web-based training programs because people can access information there whenever and however they need it. Ultimately, we try to stay as close to the topics that are currently relevant to the people, so that old know-how doesn't even crop up. That was always Siemens philosophy. A few years ago, we developed our own way of learning, in which we precisely described the fundamentals of how learning works at Siemens. What is really important here is learning in a group, meaning I bring my case with me, I learn new things, and I also have the time to explore other new things. After the seminar, employers also get time and instructions on how to make their newly found knowledge stick. For example, we'll accompany them via community, coaches or other activities in their everyday work lives so that they are able to most effectively apply what they learned in the real world. Of course, there is also a reality shock here when co-workers come out of a great seminar and find out that in reality the implementation isn't quite as easy as they had thought. That is why we don't just do the traditional post-seminar feedback session. We also do another one three months later to check whether the seminar actually proved beneficial and whether there were topics that had hindered or helped the participants introduce what they originally had in their heads. It is really exciting when you get this measurement. We have about 50,000 to 70,000 participants per year for whom seminar data can be evaluated. That provides real statistical relevance and allows us to establish where problems exist and where improvements can be made. We also find out where we can add new elements and methods and that is an area where we are quite innovative. We always try new things and then evaluate whether they worked or not. Twenty thirty is quite a long way off. We aren't currently looking past 2020, and what we are trying to establish by then is a more globalized learning process. We will try to personalize learning with learning on demand and mobile learning, primarily based on video tools. We will motivate employees to bring even more of their own material, and we will get closer to real business processes, which means learning will be more closely connected to their everyday work life. Things are going to change dramatically for advanced seminar modules like the corporate universities, the business models behind traditional social media such as Facebook or Google, are all based on advertising or the sale of personal information. In the context of a company, however, that makes absolutely no sense. We have company directories where you can't find people's names. The business model for future learning environments will naturally be a massive challenge. We will have to create new roles in terms of performance support. And we will have to explore ways of proving competence in a subject. For example, through certifications, the topic of content curating will still be vital. That is, we will still have to evaluate content based on its suitability and relevance to the company. In the coming years, global companies will be facing brand new challenges beyond the subject of instruction or today's learning standards. For example, questions regarding tax law, labor law, data security and data protection will be important new topics. Those are completely new areas that will play a larger role in learning, because the more open the system becomes, the more vulnerable it will be to abuse.
At Siemens, we have developed user manuals for social media that we deliver through a web-based seminar. Thus far, we have reached 100,000 people with the program. The philosophy is to make employees into participants. They have to understand the company's motives and understand the risks. It's a real tightrope walk at the moment, too. Because on the one hand, we are saying, use this, but use it appropriately. We aren't monitoring it. We can't. On the other hand, we have to sensitize employees to what can happen if they put information out there that is perhaps not for everyone's eyes. That is a precarious balance that you can't expect people to handle without a bit of instruction and experience we get setbacks. It requires patience, which is not always the first virtue that comes to mind at large companies.